Harry, do you think male pattern hair loss is avoidable by adhering to a species appropriate diet or is it driven by androgen DHT? You look if it's multiple generations, a bit like Bart, multiple generations, you will have certain genes turned on permanently. It's a bit the, the potted just cat. Now, if you go into the wild in native environments or, you know, amongst tribal people, you don't see male pattern baldness, hair loss and stuff like that. So there are certain gen genes that can be affected, influenced. Species appropriate diet seems to better regulate um, and certain turn certain genes off that are associated with this condition. But obviously, if somebody's multiple generations, like Pottinger's cat, multiple generations, then those genes are turned permanently on. And there's not many things that can turn, switch those genes off. You would have to go on a species appropriate diet over three, a couple of generations to reverse that. So having said that, I do have genetics. And I've shown people before my 23andMe information that I've got for male baldness and for graying my graying of hair all my relatives they went gray on my mother's side gray in their 30s even my sisters in their late 30s i had to get to my early 50s i'm 56 now but i had to get my well nearly 56 in september but i had to get to my to my mid my early 50s before I started going grey. So I must be doing something right to be holding back the greyness. I definitely, most of my life, I may have had seed oils and a whole lot of other things, but I did consume both eggs and meat even in my bad old days. I just consumed a lot of other bad things, but I did love meat, always did. And so that extra protein and all that probably helped quite a bit maintain my hair and also prevent me from going gray much earlier even though I've got genetics so and my father has male pattern baldness um he's 87 but he still has male pattern baldness um my uncle nick has a lot of he's actually gone bald in front completely my cousin harry and john on my father's side they've all got our uh, pattern baldness and, and stuff like that. For me, you know, my hair is pretty good in that regard. Um, and it's quite thick. It grows very rapidly and all that. And when I use, when I eat more eggs and I get more biotin and when I eat more um, protein, and in particular when I use MSM as well, sulfurs, you know, like taurine and MSM, my hair can re become really thick because the keratin requires sulfur to bind you know so sulfur amino acids are very important msm seems to make do a better job than even taurine so you could give msm a try so msm sulfur so m for mary s for sam m for mary so msm you could give that a go um also biotin rich foods which are eggs and stuff like that really important for for better hair quality um all this other sort of stuff hormonal sort of stuff is when you're on a species inappropriate diet and doing a whole lot of other things that's when usually your hormones are out of whack when you're not eating species appropriate so it's more of this you know you take a look at that guy what's his name um that russian guy that talks with um uh, with the right the Ray pete guy the russian guy he's actually losing his hair he's actually receding hairline and all that you know, and I've got, look, thick hair, thick hair. And I used to have um, male pattern baldness, had a big ball patch in front and, and the back. I was losing my hair. And look at now how thick it is. Got it? So I've pretty much reversed it. Actually, I'll bring my 23 and Me stuff up just so you people can see. Some of you new people probably haven't seen my 23 genetics. So this, you don't need carbs for, that's that's just bloody nonsense. Anybody that believes that believes in, can believe in fairy tales and, uh, you know, goblins and whatever else. 
you basically, your hair is made of protein. You know, what do you think collagen is? Mineral, it's protein. It's in the legs, it's mineralized protein. If it's in the hair, it's protein. That's all we're made of. There's Harry. This is 23 and me. And these are some of my traits. So hair thickness, it's in your genes. Harry, your genetics make you less likely to have thick hair strands. The hair, when I actually eat more of the foods that I've been talking about, my hair becomes, and sulfur, becomes thicker. Don't blame mum, yeah, Harry. The combination of your genetics and other factors make you likely to experience some hair loss or thinning be before age 40. Experience hair loss or thinning before age 40, 70%. Did not 30%. So the likelihood is 70% for me and all my cousins on my father's side in particular have basically quite a lot of hair loss. Got it? Um, my mother also had some alopecia and she was, especially after her 70s. So there is a bit on mum's side, but it's not as severe on mum's side it's much more severe on dad's side but there is some alopecia as well on mum's side as well so that's why I'm, you know i'm you know they usually they any when you get 70 or above it's yeah pretty high on obviously it's dad's side primarily for this these genes got it no great thickness and likely to become bald. And, uh, yeah, just the reality, just the reality. Yep, see, nice big bald head, likely. So genetically, I'm predisposed to become bald and predisposed to have thinner hair. You know, the genes, well, it seems like I've been able to fight against my own genes. Not bad, eh? So, yes. And I'll tell you one thing. I had to cut the... I've, I've literally haven't been using MSM now for about a year. When I use MSM, my hair becomes so thick, the barber has difficulty cutting it and says, bloody hell, your hair is so thick. I can't, you know. You know, what are you doing, Harry? So I have to ease off. So... You want to think that Ray Pete and all these merry men and all this bullshit. There's a whole industry here making making money off people's misery, you know, frigging around with their hormones when all they need to basically do is eat a species appropriate diet and sort of, you know. Another thing that I think that's related to probably these genetics as well is my choline problem, my choline conversion problem. And I would say there, there's probably an importance in basically lowering the... Uh, sort of the... You know, like we're exposed to a lot of xenoestrogens you know, estrogens and stuff like that and a lot of other things that can really mess up the hormones. Um, I did the boron thing to normalise my hormones as well you know, 12, 9, 6, 3, and stick to 3. Otherwise, you'll cause yourself um, a potassium and magnesium deficiency if you go higher than that for long periods of time. So it's one week, one week, one week, one week, down to three on the fourth week, and then stick to that, which is equivalent to two avocados. You do that for a couple of months, that will normalize the sort of hormonal sort of stuff. Then on top of that, you throw in you know, some of these critical nutrients that are animal-based nutrients, and they will improve. Now, if you really want thick hair, you can go a bit hard on, especially if people have got really thin hair in the early days. I usually go, yeah, go a couple of grams, up to four grams of MSM, you know, try and thicken up your hair. That will improve the actual, um, the bind, the 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 way keratin is bound, um, you know, the the 
the parts of the hair, the way they're bound together, they, they will, their strands will be much stronger. And you'll notice it. You'll try and actually pull them. You know, I, can, I can't pull. I don't lose. You know, I look in the bath. There's no hair there. I don't really generate a lot of hair when I'm showering or whatever. There's no hair loss. It actually th seems to be, you know, much stronger, the hair um, follicles. I can't even, you know, pluck them out or pull them out. You know, there's no nothing there, you know. So they tend to be, and I think these sulfur amino acids are playing an important role. And that's what's in animal foods, you know, methionine, you know, um, uh, taurine things like that that are very important glycine you know very important for you know for collagen and you know your hair and your nails what are they you know sort of uh, sort of the the sort of the nail quality is really good in mine i mean hello kitty's seen my nails because i show her and you know they've got nice pinkiness and all that and she's seen them and she goes you know she's still working because hers aren't you know, I'm going, just keep at it, I say to her, keep at it, and these things will improve over time. She used to get these little, um, I forget what it's called, um, uh, sort of little growths on her hands and all that in the winter. That's all gone. She no longer gets that. Completely gone, you know. So that's resolved and a whole lot of other things resolved. Better circulation. So blood circulation is important for peripheral, you know, a lot of these peripheral neuropathy and a lot of other conditions peripheral type issues you know sulfur amino acids like taurine play an important role reducing the glycating factors in these peripheral areas so improving you know not only the nerves but also improving sort of the vascular sort of tree in that peripheral thing plus i do recommend people that may have some conditions like that to also consider L citrulline. I use it for vasodilation. I've used it since I had my cardiovascular issues a while back. You know, yeah, I was, you know, big, had a big pop belly. Um, one of those big, you know, people have difficulty walking, one of those big pop bellies, in for surgery, double bypass, um, you know, hair receding hairline, you know, all this sort of stuff. I was a friggin' mess. My hair, my my skin was really bad, which is now much younger than it was when I was forty. You know, my look looks much better now than then. It's just ridiculous what a species appropriate diet does for you. Shocking, isn't it? Yeah, trying to interfere with these hormones is not a good idea. You know leave the body it's got genetic transcription leave the body just regulate it properly with a species appropriate foods and add a few of these biohacks and stuff you know very important just because people don't you know i go there it is there's the evidence my genetics but i i'm not a victim of my genetics by going to a species appropriate diet, I've actually silenced those genes epigenetically. Got it? So there is hope for some people. Not for everyone. You know, some people like Bart, you know, eh, there's too many generations that did the wrong thing, you know, and so it's sort of, but it's a bit like, you know, the sort of stuff that I talk about with, um, you know, certain neurological diseases, you can actually turn off the genes um, with high doses of phosphatidylserine. you know, so completely turn off these genes. They're doing it in Israel for Ashkenazi Jews that have got specific types of neurological disorders that usually end up being fatal. They can turn those genes completely off, completely put them into remission and, and reverse the neurological disorder. So. Exactly.